LPL and uh, Coach Sim someone. Oh, Coach Kim rather, excuse me. Every time. Coach Kim on PLG. The Sim left <laughs> this year. It, we went from Sim to Kim. To Kim. And I don't know if there's anyone else who has IM in their name, but that, that'll be coming up next. So uh, We got Kim on the roster and BLG on blue to crack myself. A bit of a sloppy start for me, so I apologize. 11.2, we talked about it before. Olaf's still a must ban, but the Alistar away from peace running into the second game. Look, I don't blame. Yeah, I'm a little bit sloppy this morning as well. It's been a, a long hour haul with Dude, the LPL it's, seven it's like days a week. Now, and yeah, covering it's, if anyone doesn't know. Yeah, it's a 5 a.m. start for me. But for the, yeah. for the Irish and the English guys, I mean, it's like, yeah, four, 3, 4 a.m. they have to wake up, and that might seem like ideal gamer hours but when you have to no, wake up i get that. i get up at 5 a.m yeah. i wake up at 5 a.m and i get on for tech rehearsal at six but yeah it's a toughie but coming into today we're looking at this for graves graves i'm not the biggest fan of the first lock graves we've kind of started the conversation of graves can be a little bit of a bait he look works very well in the scenarios that he's strong in but when you've got like ap junglers like nidalee talia Lilia that can all do reasonably well against them. You can opt in towards long range compositions with the likes of Zoe's and Singers in the mid lane. Even Oriana's been able to zone them out with the, the orb. It makes it very difficult for this Graves to have the impact that you would expect and also being able to operate in these team fights. So I'm only so so on the Graves. I think you've left yourself pretty vulnerable here as BLG, but it is a meteor special. You just get the Thresh here. Mark has a great Thresh, and even yeah. though the Rel uh, can be partnered up really nicely with the Samira. The Aphelios Thresh has been such a good lane in the LPL, so aiming him not get priority, Meteor gets comfort. And now we're going to see if Flora can match the tempo with the Nidalee we talked about. This is his most played jungler, and he's going to have to bring his debut of LPL right into Meteor's face. So there's two different ways that you can play this Nidalee, right? We've seen her paired with the super CC oriented compositions like the Twisted Fates and the Renektons and the Camilles, and you go towards that more lane focused style. However, Renekton, Camille, Twisted Fate, all just banned away. Yeah. So what we're probably going to see instead is LGD opting more towards, okay, counter pick for Colt, pushing lane, maybe something like the NAR that gives the opportunity for Uni, or sorry, for Flora to move in towards the enemy jungle, look to steal away these camps and create that jungle difference in this game. That's what you want to see again. Meteor had a big lead in that early game of game one, Dagda, so it's a very valid point. I, I want to focus a little bit on the bands here because we're targeting away some of the global pressure to affect the bottom lane. And when we see the fellows Thresh, we want to see everyone heading down towards the bottom lane. So LGD, another global with the Galio gone. And Zika's options to start roaming early have been limited as such. So I actually, I want to see two picks here for LGD. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the Jace and it's going to be the zone. Okay. So I think with the composition that I see on BLG's side, they are very short range. They Look. want teams to play in on top of them, but you don't, if you go towards the Zoe oh, and you go towards this chase, you don't give them the opportunity to go towards that, but you also get very strong pushing lanes that you can then use as Flora to invade, get deep vision, and allow your lanes to play out just these very favorable matchups. So I want to see now if we do get the chase in for Colt, or if they opt in instead towards something that's a little bit more frontline-y and trying to dissuade any sort of pesky engages that can come in from the BLG side. Well, because for BLG, they've just set up a pretty standard composition, right? We've got a front line and we've got a lot of space to be created with this Gragas and a, a lot of space to be given over to Aiming Zephelios. So double AD carry, some good engage potential and disengage, I should add. Uh, BLG have a very easy to execute comp here, Lyric. Uh, excuse me, Dagda. Hey, it's been a while. Oh, God. You can't blame me. Oh, wow. You can't blame Turns me. me down at the start of the day. <laughs> says the wrong name in chat oh, select. I'm so sorry. God, I know where I stand now, huh? Uh, Dagda. <laughs> while on the other side, LGD, you know, we got the uh, we got the Aatrox to finish off. We already talked about it. His self-healing in the ultimate is reduced. And Gore Drink is still the same. Means there's still going to be great healing, but not as great as we've seen before. So you don't get your chase. We only get the poke elements through the mid 2v2. Yeah, and that's going to be a big issue here for the uh, the BLG side to deal with. This is why I don't like going for these early Graves picks. You just leave yourself so vulnerable in the draft. And LGD have counteracted very, very well. But we will need to see now if you have Floor being able to play through the likes of the, the strong mid-jungle 2v2 they've set up with the advantages this Aatrox should have over the Gragas. Like, these are where I want to see now Flora 
being enabled, and if he can play the style that uh, at least we haven't seen prior to this on LG. A debut game, remember, as you can see 80 carries on your screen. We just had a glance of aiming versus Kramer again. Uh, these guys, you know, they've, they've seen each other in the LCK before, but now in the LPL abroad, they'll see if they can make short work of these team comps as we run on in and you know, Dak already talked about the poke coming through, BOG. I mentioned things like the engage, the ease of execution. Also, just remember, you know, we, we've got good scaling on there as well. So we'll see. BOG, Meteor took over game one, didn't he? It was that 30, 40 CS lead, about 15 minutes in the game on the Talia. Can he do it against Flora, who's debuting in the LPL? A lot of questions to ask running into this one, Dagda. And one of the big questions for me when I look at the BLG side is like, how do they try and play at these team fights, right? Because they're going to be very heavily reliant on the likes of Zika to get these good scatter of the weeks to dissuade LGD from just being able to poke them down. You're looking at Bubu as well as this big engage tool on the Gragas. So for Meteor's side of things, he needs to make sure that he's keeping LGD in check, that they're not just running away with these massive lane advantages. And then hopefully Biu Biu and uh, Zika can find these engages to set up the short range composition of BLG. Because I want to come back to, you know, BLG and especially Meteor. Meteor, this is his eighth Graves game. For context, the, most, the second most played is Olaf at three. And a lot of teams are not willing to give over this Graves. In fact, you know, it's it's up there with some of the most banned against Billy Billy. And Meteor, you know, game number eight, he's got a 58% win rate, 8.5 KDA. So he does well on the Graves pick here with a five, uh, five out of seven, I believe. Or maybe it's four out of seven. Math was not my priority in, in high school, but... <laughs> Uh, Meteor, he's got high expectations on this pick, just to reiterate. Now towards the bottom side, it is actually a bottom side start for both of these junglers to see if they can make their way up through the lanes. Yeah, and I've... Oh, actually, a little bit of trading on oh, towards Aiming in the bottom side. At half health, remember that's good, but a good little flay backwards as well. Let's see if Aiming can heal up and stay safe in this wave. That'll be the difference to getting good trades again. Yeah, I think, honestly, what we'll see is a full clear from both these junglers in towards um, a reset, or at least maybe a fight over the scuttle. I imagine that with the, the push that you have for this Zoe in the mid lane, but also Aatrox, well, in theory, being able to trade somewhat okay, but um, UB getting a nice body slam there, making it a little bit more difficult for Colt. You, you know what, um, Dagda? But you should be able to get this top side the, the scuttle is, in Italy. The thing is, like... We've had a lot of these discussions in the LPL, and what we've seen out of the Gragas top is his base stats are so nice, and his laning is is actually a lot stronger than I, I assume people would expect. So, a lot of these matchups feeling pretty nice, right? You know, get the early trades, early bops. He's started with the Doran's ring, and against the Doran shield here, uh, Bubu is doing quite nicely in the waves. So, I like that you kind of bring up the matchup. There is more to discuss with it, as we see Colt actually getting back better trades now that he has the versatility of level three. Yeah, and it, it's not only just the base stats, it's this inbuilt sustain. When you have the grasp of the undying, healing off of your passive, and you've got these pots, it's so hard to push you out of lane and why he's become one of the premier weak side top laners. But you can see here, which is what I like, Meteor trying to set up some control on this top side. And it looks like Meteor will actually be the one that's getting this top side's guttle. Bottom was taken by Kramer and Peace, uh, which means that for Flora, he's actually been set behind at least the camp here. Flora is someone who, again, we talked about his debut game. Uh, Flora, however, coming back onto the map with amplifying tomes. So, does have a, a small net advantage. Bottom side scuttle for top side scuttle. That is the interchange. He also mentioned the mid 2v2 and how the poke can just annihilate Zika. He's used his teleport to lane. So, Flora now going around this side of the map. If he finds anything mid, or maybe continue to... Try and push for a jungle advantage. Look at the bottom wave, Dagda. You seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing a crash down. I'm seeing a good fly, but I'm seeing Flora on his way. But hits a goalpost. And out he goes. Yeah, and Kramer taking the bit worse off of the brunt in that trade as well. So you can see he's been set fairly low, aiming 
even though he took that level one trade pretty poorly, has been able to heal up. And now you've got an advantage for BLG. And this was the big issue that I, wa I wanted to see how LGD were going to play around. Because Kramer and Peace have, or at least the bot lane for LGD, has not been a strong point. So even in this favorable matchup, they're losing oh. out on push. They're oh. losing out when it comes to trades. And now Floor is in a position where he's not able to get that invade. He's not able to try and fight toe to toe against Meteor, push the advantages you have as Nidalee in this matchup. And BLG are going to be winning out. People might be wondering why I'm having a bit of a laugh there. I like the block from Zika. Uniboy just wanted a quick clear then to base. Because remember, he's running Ignite in this lane. Uniboy has Electrocute and Ignite. A very aggressive uh, Zoe lane to run into the Syndra. Which, again, in this league, we've talked about being kind of on the favorable end of the Syndra. And pushes in the wave. Denies a couple of creeps from Uniboy. So that quick maneuver from Zika makes a big difference. And it's actually a bit of a misplay, I'm going to say, from Uniboy in the way he's strategized his back timings. Because we saw him get that early back off. He didn't actually stick around to try and help for the scuttle. And oftentimes when you crash that third wave, you'll see like the likes of a Zoe back, especially in these more aggressive lanes, pick up an early Dark Seal, pick up an extra Dorans for themselves. You get the, the health that you need to try and sustain against this Seeker, but also the opportunity to use these aggressive lane summoners and uh, rune choices. But that's not what he's going for. Instead, he would have actually got more value right now out of the likes of this TP. It's happening in the top lane. Meanwhile, Bivu at level six gets flashed on by the trouble of the lands. The dunk comes down and Colt picks up first blood. Meteor's stuck against this wall as Colt takes one turret shot too many, but still survives. And LGD, it's a messy dive, but they make it work. Well, meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Mark's set up for his hook, but finds nothing. And LGD came in chaotic there. It's chaotic, but it works. They get their advantages. They get their two kills. But now you need to be careful on this bottom side. Kramer and Peace, you're taking this early Samir and Rel. You want to be dominant in lane. But Peace hasn't found the engages that he wants. Mark's been doing a good job of keeping that flay, making sure they can't go aggressive. And it's been Aiming who's been able to poke them out. We're going to take a look at this dive in the top side, though. Very dicey. As we That's said, Nidalee likes the likes of Renekton to set up these plays. And you can see there... Cult manages to get the knockup, sets up for that spear, and that's the crucial part for this dive, is enabling that oh. Nidalee. They managed to get it set up there, and everyone, they might be bloody, they might be bruised, but they're a little bit rich. But that's the cool thing, right? Like, you know, what's the difference between dicey and, you know, clean, right? No one died, uh, they got the kills in the end. We, we kind of call that clean, right? Where you know, it dicey on the health bars, but the fact that it still worked is huge for LGD. You have the Zoe with a kill. You've got Colt with one too. And in this matchup, now with the Phage, it's going to start becoming uh, pretty brutal. Uh, we've got a um, Bramble Vest on the other side, excuse me, with a tear in hand. But the Phage, the Negatron Cloak, or rather the Null Magic Mantle, is going to deny a lot of damage and feel pretty good for Colt. So for LGD, starting this game off right, and with the help of Flora, who now gets some momentum back in his jungle with the Hextech Alternator, this is LGD at a, at a 1k gold lead at 7 minutes. Yeah, You still, though, have Uniboy. He was set in the back foot by that play. Yes, he got the kill, but did lose a lot of that uh, minion wave to the tower. Won't have the same XP as you can see from Zeke. Zeke will hit that level 8 a lot quicker. Um, so you still have lost a little bit as LGD, yep. but certainly you're in a good spot. And the per people that are at least getting these leads are your poke champions. So the Nidalee, who's now in a great spot where, yes, she can start to take these objectives, but she's a lot quicker towards that Night Harvester. She can now start to get those poke off at these major objectives. Here comes Meteor, though. The tempo-based jungler being challenged into the pit, end of the line, smite down, but it's Flora who secures. And after that, now Trouble Bubble flies through. Uniboy at the ready. He has a Prowl's Claw because, remember, this patch, we can start picking up those items. Uh, the Mythics says Uniboy just gets scattered the week, but nothing of it. And Meteor doesn't get floor it. That's a big win for LGD. And just to come back to our talking points about the composition stack, though, we know that Nidalee is one of the biggest tempo-based junglers in League of Legends. We know how these comps are going to interact and what Zoe and Aatrox need in comparison. So LGD keeping the tempo going is a really good sign of their control over this early game. 
Exactly, and that Rift Herald is going to be able to give him the opportunity to start to take these turrets. And as a more poke focused composition, you need to be the ones with full control over river for the likes of these dragons. You want to make sure that you're spotting out where BOG are, they're not able to get these flanks. So oh, the Rift Herald will help. Task, well done to use. Dagda, this could be a kill coming through. Colt wants to heal up, but it's too early in the game. And good timing from Meteor sets up Yuvi to crash in the wave and get the kill. Brilliant from Meteor. Manages to get that kill back around, get a little bit more control of this top side of the map. However, look at the cross map. Instantly, Flora is like, cool, you make a play top, Ooh. I make this dragon happen bot side. Very well spotted, actually. It already has the Herald you mentioned, so we're waiting for the placement, but the Infernal to start the game off with bottom side priority, thanks to the Rel Samira lane. And LGD getting these objectives fast. Good to see Flora's debut is one that's putting, you know, his name on the list. As they get the dragon down, we'll still wait for the Herald, but I think we're going to see how the Herald was taken. Yeah, I mean, it, this is just kind of giving an indication of, like, where Meteor sees himself in this mid-jungle 2v2 matchup. Because you can see Looney Boy gets the roam across. He manages... Yes, he does steal away that Herald, but he doesn't want to stick around for the cavalry to arrive because yep. with the long-range poke and that AP damage specifically, Graves just sucks into this matchup. So he's like, look, I'm piecing out. I don't have a living hope here. At least we stopped... Uh, or actually, he doesn't get the steal, but at least we were able to... Uh, at least put some pressure on towards Flora. Now, though, as we said, with that Rift Herald in place, uh, Flora, I want to see him get this mid lane tower cracked open. I want to see him start to snowball Uniboy so that poke can come on. Maybe they're looking towards Kramer instead, the Samira with the Herald. Not going to be put down as Peace was the one who hex flashed over the wall. I want to come back to the contrast about mid laners, right? Zika's 20 CS up in this lane because Uniboy both times moved to top to get the kill then move towards Herald just in case when Zika was able to push out and then move himself. So Zika's been a lot more focused about the lane this game. Uniboy catches that CS advantage with the kill we already mentioned. Good scout of the week there from Zika as well. It's a lost chapter versus the Sork Shoes here in the early game as Death Sentence blocked there by a Blade Well. Nice timing from Kramer. Uh, I want to see as we start to go forward here how LGD are going to approach these dragons though because I think it's nice when you're a poke composition that you pick up some of these early dragons so you get to kind of pick and choose your fights a little bit more you don't feel the pressure to oh my god we have to fight against BLG but yeah not gonna matter crash down just ignores it Mark keeps getting hooks there's the blade well there's the ferromancy crash down each time and Mark can't do too much in this lane at least in the early stages as Meteor's back towards the top lane and Colt paying his respect Notice the back timing from Flora. Not the best. It's, okay, Dagda, we're just going to do this dance again, but this time with pants as the box gets put down. Bark is at half HP. We start spinning to win with the Inferno trigger. And Kramer now out of matter. Mark just walks away. Aiming has Infernum himself. This just might be a beneficial trade for Meteor until that Herald gets put down. Yeah, and they need to trade this now. Herald will get put down, but they're under terror here. Aiming's sticking around. He's just ordering peace. Make a decision, peace. peace. What are you doing, son? Okay, he runs out eventually as Zika's on the backside. Have they delayed for too long? Unleash power into Kramer. Remember, he has no mana, freak, as Peace is running away into the river. There's the TP and aiming to pick up the kill. Bew Bew flies in, explosive cast. Nicely done. Zika wants to predict here, but it's the other way that Flora goes. Waiting for the body slam is Bew Bew. As Flora's on the run, he flashes away. And BLG take them by surprise. And they take it all. They got those three terror plates in the top side. The bottom three plates, yeah, the Rift Tower will get them, but they don't get the likes of that terror on the bottom side to trade. And you get a bunch of kills over onto BLG side. This is gorgeous turnaround from BLG and a big mistake from Peace. Not deciding that are we going are we aggressing yeah. what the hell are we doing in this situation lgd nobody was even reading the right book let alone being on the same and, and you know what the biggest issue was i think from flora is he put the herald on the wrong side of the wall it had to path around gave like an extra three seconds to blg well, that whole thing well, watch it again Dagda. that and whole, right, the thing whole thing was bad. just so strange <laughs> like when you're like you want to get these first turret plates down before you place the herald anyway and here what is Peace hoping to achieve? Like, Flora has gone on towards the support. Peace is just wailing on the entire... Or being wailed on the whole time by aiming. And a great job again here by Zika. 
gets that TP down to the bottom side. And at this point, BLG are like, hang on a second, this is actually turning around, which is why Bu Bu, these are the engages that I want to see, and this is what I want to see him doing as this game goes on. Because this is how BLG are going to find these advantages against LG. And, and you know, this feels like the uh, LNG series again. Game two, Bu Bu was the one who was getting kills, getting some resources. He didn't have that 0-4 start that we've seen uh, many games now. The 2 and one in a very good position, this frontline Gragas. But not only that, Aiming who's being pushed in, bullied out the whole time. Aiming and Mark are in great positions. Kraken Slayer picked up for a Felios here. And so... For BLG, across the board, they've got a gold lead. But can they survive? Flora hasn't been spotted out. There's a Ferromancy crash down. Attract and repel. Dodges away from the spear. It wasn't on top of that one. Is into a short ankle. Oh, no. It's Ninja Gaiden again. Dagda Meteor against the wall. Peace is going to get hit. And he gets the collateral damage as well. BLG with another. And these trades keep benefiting BLG. And this is where I was like, look, Flora, if you are not going to go for these invades, if you're not going to be able to snowball your uh, advantages through the jungle matchup, you need to get into these lanes, but it's too little too late. And Meteor, again, um, doing a great job reading it. Kramer, though, what was that? Kramer decided he wants the game to end. <laughs> <Like that> was... <laughs> well, let's just be honest, oh. ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't a good play. Don't emulate that. Uh, Colt and Bu Bu are hitting each other, but that doesn't matter because now the bottom lane's gone. And I don't know, man. World's 80 carry I'm, hits different. Yeah. I'm starting to realize that, like, Mark in lane is why Kramer kind of looked decent on LGD last year. Because Mark's laning phase has been absolutely incredible. Like, yep. he has looked good in pretty much every single series in their laning phase. Now, we talk about his engages. They aren't looking that good. But certainly, at this point in time, going up against Kramer, Mark's been having a field day. And Kramer's been making these weird choices. We saw it in the top esports series where he's getting picked off by Joe's Alistair. Now we're seeing it again here where he goes aggressive as Zika just walks around the corner and kills him. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but, uh, you know, boy, hello. Inky comes, Zoe things, and Ignite down, he cleanses away. <laughs> Zoe doesn't have a full <laughs> item yet. It is 16 minutes Not of the game, close. Dagda. Ignite put down, and, and that was the result. It wasn't even close. Come on. Sure. Amy knew what he was doing. It was fine. Uh, yeah, however, off of that play, despite the fact that uh, BLG are down a man, Meteor is actually able to take this top uh, scuttle. It looks like they're going to try and crack open this top lane turret. I would prefer to see them actually hold on towards this rift turret. I hope we don't see Meteor put it down because when you got this uh, dragon come up in three and a half minutes, you have this top lane turret already. You got the bot. Let's just use this to crack open the mid lane turret. Oh, Media just waiting in a turret at the ready there in the top lane as another one goes down. It was a trade. Remember, LGD behind the curve on this one is mid turret now under threat, but aiming, doing the job himself, hits him with a caliber of Moonlight Vigil and just waiting into the side. Scatter of the week, unleash power first, though, onto Flora. I was going to call him Fiora, would have been a better name as Spear comes down and BLG, four man stack mid. Herald's going to get another charge just to put some damage down and BLG up again in tempo. Up in tempo, up in gold, and even up in dark seal stacks, as you can see, you got three already for Zika on this Syndra. So yep. I'm really liking BLG right now, where if they can move in off of these early objectives, go for like the 130 reset timer we talked about in the last game, get deep vision, find these flank opportunities. Don't let LGD just poke away at you at these objectives. They can find really good opportunities to win these fights. Zika was going to back here, but Colt shows himself into the Worldender. It's a 1v1, and on the way is peace. Will he be needed? Flashes away, trying to kite this one. Great scatter of the week, and the answer is no, because Zika diffuses the situation, but has to burn his own flash. Just the bad escapes, but a lot of members of BLG now hovering up towards this top side, and Colt still needs to be careful. Meteor will spot him out, but it looks like they'll just back away from each other. And nothing up in this top side otherwise. We've got a minute 30 until the Baron spawns. The Cloud Soul is coming up, or at least the Cloud Rift, I should say. Excuse me. Uh, three more dragons for any team to pick that one up. And Zika just moves back into lane, and you know, we're at a point where Mythics are starting to be completed across the board and just finishing up those slots. The second item for aiming, who's so far ahead now with the two kills and bounty, he'll almost have Renance by the time we get towards his next dragon. 
Yeah, and that's the thing here is like, this is feeling very much like last game where you have a couple of plays coming out from LGD, but they're being turned around and BLG are just slowly accumulating these leads over and over and over. And now we're approaching this next dragon in a minute. It will only be the second dragon, so I don't expect LGD to fight for it. I think they will still continue to try and get the likes of these top lane turrets down, get this mid lane turret down, and yeah. maybe make a play on this top side. Body Slam doesn't get him away. He gets pulled back in. The spear hits a minion instead, and they choose not to go for it. He's too tanky at this point with the Sunfire Aegis, and Tarot goes down. Meanwhile, Meteor in the mid lane. Uni Boy's in a bit of trouble. Doesn't have his flash available. Smokescreen lays him down. Death Sentence a shy short. The collateral damage doesn't hit either, but the Moonlight Vigil does. He's burning down, but Uniboy survives. Just about that Corrupting Potion ticking along, giving him that health back. But again, BLG, hey, you want one tower top? Cool, we'll trade it for this ah. inner and... Oh, he just sends Colt closer towards his turret. That's not what you want. Body slams out to delay time, while BLG are going to make a play on the bottom side turret. That's all they can do after Bubu goes down and LGD are willing to push, but they don't have any damage. They don't have any DPS. But this is a win for BLG. They are getting all these inner turrets down, which means they'll have full vision control, whatever the hell they want. LGD, though, they're pulling the trigger. They're saying, we yeah. need to do something, and desperation back. Yeah, he said it's a win for BLG, unless Baron goes down, in which case, Meteor's not walking towards oh. it. Mark's there, but okay, they pull off, they pull off. Our cameraman now pans over, and LGD have pulled off. So it is a free dragon, and yes, it is a big win for BLG. Yeah, and I mean, it's not a good sign when LGD are doing a desperation play at 20 minutes into the game. They try to see if they can turn that into a Baron. Um, all the BLG have to do is just poke in, check like a mother scene if the kids are playing nicely in the bedroom, and they all just hide the toys, they hide any problems, and they just walk back to base with their heads hanging low. That reminds me of uh, being a kid. You know, parents came and check on me, and then I had a TV in my room, I had an Xbox, you know, the Xbox original. Yeah. And that's when I'd go back to playing Counter-Strike. You know, I, I think it's 1.6 that was on the Xbox as well with the bots. Because uh, back then we didn't have internet. You were a real savant if you had internet on original Xbox. So uh, thank you for bringing down memory lane again, Dagda. That feels pretty <laughs> nice. I uh, can't wait to lie. I, I always and, had a... You know? Yeah, I always had the Pokemon underneath the... Uh, the oh, display. yeah. Was, like, have the Game Boy underneath with the light. Yeah. And you're, like, trying to see if you could hook the light in between, like, your neck and your shoulder so you could, like, yeah. play with two hands. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Game Boy Advance, bro. There was no inbuilt light. It wasn't the Game Boy Advance no SP. Yeah. You had to have the one over it. It was like, ah, oh, playing at night was a nightmare. <laughs> I still have an original Game Boy at home. And, you know, I I've been seeing on Twitter, LS has, you know, all his Magic the Gathering cards or his Pokemon cards yeah. as well. Maybe oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Aiming. Pause, aiming. Caught out. Uh, not sure about the Dark Passage, but still he flashes and manages to find his way out as teleport's coming in. That's two-man Midlight Vigil. And now LGD Go Golden Floor is just dead. Scout of the week. And unleash power. This is all it takes. Colt low. And Pew, Pew just on top of the fight. Uniboy finally makes his way in, but off the side, Meteor's there. He unleashes held there with Crime City and Kramer going into the ultimate. It's a bit of a messy fight. Uniboy wants to hit the back line with the paddle star and nails down Meteor, but aiming has already killed the rel. And LGD left with three versus four. Uniboy sitting on a ward. He's in a, and he doesn't even realize he's about to walk through another, but you're not going to save this as Uniboy. Ooh. This tower is going to go down. Out of the week almost kills him too. BLG, they won't be able to end the game here. Dagda Floor is up in three seconds. 10 seconds for Colt and Peace. The inhibitor a bit risky too. Can they cure it? Yes, he can. Aiming's out and Bu Bu too. So inhibitor now broken once again in game number two. And uh, I say once again, because this is how it started in game one. A 5,000 gold lead at 23 minutes. Yeah, and now you just back. You've got four kills onto this Aphelios. Runes Hurricane already completed. Cool, let's slap an L Infinity Edge onto this guy. Get him towards a nice accelerated three items. And Amy's gonna be huge. But the bigger issue here is that the way LGD are approaching these fights. We talked about them wanting to use the range, wanting to poke, but they are continuously trying to launch Peace and Cult in here, which just gives the already in easy engage over towards BLG. Now, they do nerdy catch aiming. Great job by Peace to get the ultimate there to tear aiming back, yep. but the flash over the wall, and now look, You've got BLG coming from all sides. How do you use Flora's range when Flora's in the middle of four people? Oh. And although Uniboy does TP oh, in and does over. get some stuff, he's not this enough. That's why we don't do replays in the LPL. Uh, that's 40 second death timers. That's Baron. 
And BLG, while we're in that replay, found two of the core members of LGD. Oh, God, this is just painful. BLG, <laughs> yeah, turn towards Baron. They're going to be able to finish this one off. And this is where I think a lot of the, the rookies come in on the LGD side. He, they're just not really sure how to play through these compositions and it's easy to give yourself into the bloodlust and the aggressiveness and oh we found the pick we got to get the pick let's make it happen but this is a composition that needs to be played slow you need to be calm you need to play as a unit and make sure you're not giving the opportunity for blg to find these easy engages but also just as we watch this red buff oh fat man got it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's a discount oh, they can't code. even get that oh man they can't even get that it's oh God. when you you oh. know you ever seen like ever seen, oh, i can't remember what meme it is you know the, the larger man you know sprinting and beating the you know all, all these guys are just running down a, a marathon track and there's this large man just smashing oh, yeah. it down he sprints faster I don't know why. I don't know. I hope that's not offensive, but, you know, that's what I saw. Um, this is a, a <laughs> game that we've kind of already put in the bin. The gold lead is massive. It's 25 minutes in. You already talked about the composition from LGD. Like, they need to keep snowballing. We need to see Flora take control of the jungle. But BLG out macroed them so many Peace times. Do? What is Peace doing? Ah, uh, yes. He's going to fly. Why are you there, Peace? He's, uh, he's just giving up. <laughs> you know what? I Look, I've sacrificed my life enough times. I'm just going to be a ward. He's decided <laughs> that he's run out of wards. He's just oh, going to no, be his own little ward. But, oh, God. Yeah. All right. Well, what is going on? Peace is now left. And Uniboy's actually pulled on in. This is a Calibrum with a Moonlight Vigil. Uniboy at half health. And Bubu comes in. Uniboy's dead. Peace is still not in the fight. And... <laughs> As Colt gets whacked for a few, he's dead too. Bubu over the wall with the body slam. And BLG now have the three versus five once again. The turret doesn't mean anything. Bubu's laughing at them. Like, he takes no damage. And this is just going to end Agna a 2 0. It's just about how LGD want to die. <laughs> Why was Peace just cosplaying a war? I don't know. But, you know, we've seen many time. times in the LPL the flanks that don't work out. This is one of them. He gets hooked in anyway, and down goes Peace. That was a fun way to end it, ladies and gentlemen. A 2 0 for BLG. That was just a slaughter.